Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about GitHub. So GitHub is an online platform where you can store code and collaborate with other developers. To get started with GitHub, you need to head over to github.com and get yourself an account first. So I already have an account and I just navigated over to the settings uh, section and clicked on SSH and GPG keys. Now, I already have an SSH key uh, connected to my GitHub account. However, if you haven't done so, you can go here to this guide. And assuming you do not have an existing SSH key on your device, you can generate a new one by going to this article. And here you see this line of code. You can simply copy and paste it. And you can use the terminal right here in your Visual Studio Code. And you have to change the email address to the one you signed up with. And now you can just press enter. And in my case, it wants to override the existing uh, key. However, I don't want to do that. But in your case, you can just continue and do that. And then it will also ask you to enter a passphrase. So, um, well, take a passphrase that you can keep in mind, write, note it down somewhere. And um, then the last thing you have to do right here is to start the um, SSH agent up in the background. So you can run this command. And then you can um, add the key to that SSH agent. So you can just copy and paste and do that. So now we can actually add that SSH key to our GitHub account. So in order to do that, um, right here, you can see this line. Now if you copy and paste this, it will copy the SSH key to my clipboard. And now when I go back to my account, I can add that key. I already have the key set, but what you can do, you can click right here, new SSH key. You don't have to give it a title. You can just paste it right here and click on add SSH key. And then in order for you to test if um, you are properly authenticated, you can go to this section, testing your connection. You can then copy and paste this line and that will tell you whether you are successfully authenticated or not. So once you've done that, I will just clear my console right here. Um, as you see, I already have made a new directory. So let's make a file right here and push that to GitHub. So I just say console.log. Um, I want this code to be on. GitHub. I will save it. And now I can click right here. New repository. And I need to give it a name. I will go at um, GitHub example. I will create the repository. And now it will give you some instructions on what to do. So we want to push a new repository uh, through the command line. So we don't have to run all these commands. We just have to do git init and that will initialize an empty git repository in this folder. Um, right here they add a readme file but we don't have to do that. But we do have to add this file because if I click right here you see uh, this is already built a built-in tool by Visual Studio Code. It sees we have some changes. So first I want to add these changes. So I will say git add dot. That means I want to add everything. And now you will see these will be staged changes. Now I can push these changes um, uh, or at least commit them by saying git commit and give it a message. And I will add a link down in the description with some um, uh, well, proper git commit um, message conventions, which you could use. Um, but I will say for here, um, add main.js.
and now I can actually let's use this we say git remote add origin so this will link to our current repository and then I can push it so again copy paste and now the code is pushed to github so now if I refresh this page you will see we have our main JS file with the code um, now if you want to change this code for example what you could do is you could simply go on and change the code so I'll change this for example to github 2 save the file and again Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code will notice there is a change I will say git add so I add these changes now I will commit them so I could for example say change um, console log and now I can simply say git push and now if I refresh the page let's do it again there we go now it has changed the console log as well right here um, the next thing I'd like to show you is the github flow so uh, this is a very popular flow if you want to collaborate with other developers on a piece of code and the first thing I would like to show you is branches because if we go back to our repository right here we see we are on the main branch and our Visual Studio code also says that right here that's by default now let's say that we have some automatic deployment with which actually happens quite often in production is that once the main branch is updated the changes will also get pushed to the um, website that is live but let's say I implement a new feature and there appears to be a bug and I should have I missed it for example then I would push um, code with bugs to an online environment so that would directly affect the website that's online and that's of course it's a bad thing so that's why we can use the github flow to prevent this from happening first of all we this is like a very normal flow if you for example want to implement a new feature so first we have to make a new branch so I could say git checkout B so I want to check out and also create a new branch and I will call this um, for example add HTML so now you can see we are in this new branch so the next step is to make changes so maybe someone gives me the task to create an index file for um, for this project so I will go on and create a new file I'll say index.html I just put in some boilerplate in here oops save it and now I can say git add git commit with the message and I will say add HTML and then I can push this code but you will see that it will give us an error message and it will say that the add HTML branch is not yet existing in this repository so we can copy this line right here and now we can push it anyways and now you will see if I refresh the page it has created this new branch so you can see they already noticed that the add HTML branch had recent pushes and now we can continue and go over to the next step so we made a commit and now we are going to open a pull request so we're going to say compare and pull request and you can call this however you like I would just go with create pull request for now and then we'll check if there are any mer merge conflicts and that doesn't seem to be the case now I could for example assign someone else from my team to review this code so let's say currently there's no one working on this project but let's say I select right here 
a colleague of mine and I could, for example, give it the label. So I could say it is a new feature. There we go. So now someone else could go and check my code and they can click right here, files changed. And maybe he wants to have uh, a different title for this app. So he can add a comment and he say, hi, or actually say, I think we should call this app. And he starts a review then. So now when I come back to this branch, I will see that there has been a comment made right here on line seven. And he says, okay, he wants that we call this app. So I go back to my code. I change this in app to app. I save it. I go over it again. So I say git add, git commit. And I will say change HTML title. Git push. And now it pushes the changes to GitHub. And now the other guy can check again. And now he sees, okay, there's been some changes. And I could actually already comment right here. I could say, um, uh, I just fixed it. Comment. And submit the review. And now he comes back and he sees there were new changes. And he can then see them right here. He says, okay, looked good. And then he goes back and then he will merge the pull request. Confirm merge. And this is something you usually shouldn't do yourself unless you're the only person working on this project, of course. And then um, most of the people decide to delete the branch as well. And now if I head back over to the repository, you will see the add HTML branch has gone. However, our new feature has been implemented. So now I could go back to the GitHub flow and usually what's happening right here. So we open the pull request. We um, discussed and reviewed the code. We again, we went again through committing them. And then there is the um, deploy phase, which is not covered in this video, but we'll definitely take a look at this um in the rest of the course where we are going to automate the deploy for our apps and of course we merged the new feature into our main branch so before uh, we end this video i'd like to uh, explain one more thing and that's how to clone a repository on github so in the uh, react section of this course you will often find that we either start from scratch or we already start with some starter code that I created. And I will always um, link to the starter code uh, down in the description. Um, and if you want to download that code, uh, you have to clone the repository, so to speak. And I will show you um, how you can do that. So, uh, well, I will, in the description, I will put a link like this. And that will link to the uh, repository and the specific branch you need to use. So right here, it is styling slash CSS modules, as you can see right here as well. So uh, if you want to clone this repository, you have to um, clone it in this way. So you will only pull like this specific branch and not like the whole project, because as you can see right here in GitHub, it has a lot of uh branches so if you only want to pull one branch you can use this command so you want to say git clone dash dash single dash branch and then again double dash branch and then you want to put in there the branch name so that is styling slash css modules so i can just copy this right here styling slash CSS modules. And then you want to link to the remote repository. And I think now you can see it because I'm in the uh, in the mobile view of uh, GitHub. But when I make the screen a little bigger, you will see this button right here. Uh, and this is actually the this thing right here, right? But you can copy that is the remote repository. So you want to paste that after 
the branch name right here. And now when I hit enter, it will clone into React Core. So you will see when I display the files, you will see right now we have that React Core repository. So I can CD into React Core. And now you will see when I will restart my code editor. And I see I'm currently on the main branch. So I should actually switch to C, uh, to styling CSS modules. But you will see that we have the same files right now. So if I click on source and source, you will see we got the same file. So, um, and then you can install, install the dependencies by uh, saying npm install and hit enter. Uh, but you will find out more about that command in uh, the next uh, next videos. So that was it pretty much for the web development fundamental section of this course. And I want to sincerely congratulate you for making it this far. Uh, good job for that. And uh, I hope you're, you're liking it. So if you're enjoying the course so far, uh, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, do the like, you know, the full package. I would really appreciate uh, that. And um, yeah, I mean, the most fun part is going to come uh, in the next video, React. So uh, let's get started. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.